first time I met Condola. We were kids. <laughs> We were kids and we were working on what we were actually, what were we doing? It was a musical and he came forward and he sang this like little riff that they had all been singing throughout the whole show and his voice was so, so cute and it was just like the cutest thing ever. She kind of became like family and then all those years later we ended up playing Cousins and Romeo and Juliet when she played. Juliet and I played Tibble. And Romeo and Julia, he was just reminding me I used to drag him out after the show all the time and he would never say no to me because who could say no to me? She might not remember all this, but I remember we did this uh, Stevie Wonder song. Yeah, we did do <laughs> I forgot about that. You mentioned that, Corey? Until the rainbows fly in Paris, let us see. I think it was a jazz class, but then it turned into uh, this like Stevie Wonder review. She had a solo in it, and I was like, Oh my God, who is this girl? She's like... He's just such a rock star. It's been so great to see him go. And then now he's all over the other films. I mean, he's killing the game. Corrit! <laughs> now just what are you doing here now? <laughs> we literally run into each other like randomly all the time. <laughs> well yeah, like when I ran, I was walking down the street looking at a hot mess and you were like, like Condola, I'm like, huh? I was like, yeah, Condola with all the colors and the pop it. and the pizzazz. You already and know. You already know. <laughs> Yes. Um, well, sweet. you bring in the pizzazz and the pop today, you know what I'm saying? As are you. Well, we, we didn't, didn't plan, plan this. We did not plan this. We really this. didn't plan this, though, right? People might think we planned it. No, really, really. People are going to think they're like, oh, that's cute. They didn't plan it, but they did. We really <laughs> didn't plan it, though, is the thing about the thing. We're very, we, you know, we both like leather. It's fine. Um, so, <laughs> Corrit, mm -hmm. what's it like being major? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Well, uh, how much time you got? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, no. <laughs> no, but for real, like, you're back on the stage. Oh, yes. How is that? How I is it coming back? What's it been like going from mm. the schedule of 24, which you were telling me is crazy? It's ridiculous. Into yeah. I mean, six degrees of separation? Well, this schedule, as you know, the Broadway schedule is not that, you know, forgiving either. So yeah. it's like, it's been... It's weird because it's a different, it's just a different muscle. Like it yeah. feels like, yeah. you know, you get a second take, you get a second opportunity, you can stop in the middle and and, and you forget, you know, because we came up in the theater together yeah, right. and we Start know home. that in and out. But when you're working on film and TV, you get a little bit of leniency because you can be like, all right, all right, let me get that I didn't get it that time. Get down <laughs> let me get uh, let me do it again. <laughs> but on stage, especially with this show with Six Degrees, because it just moves so fast. Right. Um, and the language of it all, you don't get that chance. Like you have to continue, and you have to keep that energy going. And that, and and uh, it's fun, though. I mean, you know, because you're doing Doll's House. And yeah. by the way, okay, I don't know if I can look at the camera or not, but I, I saw her do. Um, I saw you do your first. I think what did I come to the it first dress? It was the dress first rehearsal. dress, and I was like, Court. I now, showed come up on, on now. the first dress rehearsal. Give us a little time to listen. Sitting front row, like, <laughs> with my condola sign. <laughs> it's true. But, true like, story. I mean, what is, what is that? It's a, it's a four-hander play. Yes. And it's, I mean, it's an amazing piece of writing. Um, and I'm going to be honest. I didn't, I didn't know, you know, the original. I didn't mm -hmm. know Doll's House. Yeah. Um, but I felt like I was watching just this, this, orchestration of, I mean, you guys nailed it. And it was your first night, I mean, and I know you said like it was it was interesting leading up to that because you didn't know if it would work. We didn't work know. If, yeah. No, we just didn't know. We were like, because we were, we had, we had, um, because it is a new um, play, it's, it's the only one that's that's actually not had a, a run out of Broadway. Where the world premiere is this Broadway production. Right. So what, how we got there was last year we had a few workshops. Mm -hmm. So we had been in this kind of Doll's House Part 2 bubble for quite some time, uh -huh. working with the script and then also just kind of working with each other. We, I mean, we, we literally had about, like, I think it was three, three workshops really? before we had rehearsal. Really? Last year, yes. Wow. So when we were in rehearsal, you know, it's, it's tricky because when you, one, I didn't know it was as, I didn't know people were going to think it was as funny as it is. Now, again, when you read it, when I read it, mm -hmm. um, there are parts that are funny, but when I'm reading it, it actually seemed more to be like a, a drama with comedic moments mm -hmm. versus like now it's kind of this poignant dark comedy, <laughs> which is what it's kind of, um, but in rehearsal, because you don't have a room full of people, um, 
you know, we were doing the whole, we're doing all these scenes and there's right. nobody laughing because it's the director trying to figure it out. And right. so we just didn't know. And you all know the place so well. I mean, that's that thing when you're in the middle of it and you... You just don't know. Yeah, you don't you know. know I didn't know how people were going to take to it. I, you just you just never really know. We just no sense of, sense of it. I have to say, like, we all left that the... We sat in our seats after, of course, giving a raucous ovation. <laughs> but we literally sat in our seats afterwards and we were like, we all turned to each other and we were like, we just watched a master class in, in acting. And I mean that. Like, and it's so amazing to see how you've grown and how you've been able to just take on these different roles and Me? Yes. You <laughs> Mr. I've known you since you were how old were you when we did brother when you no, we did. You see, you see how I've just yeah, put exactly. myself in that cast? You see how I just said we? Because really in my heart I was in the cast too. Meanwhile, I was in the wing somewhere. Yeah. Brothers of the Night. Brothers, Brothers of, the of, the night. of the Night at the Kennedy Center. How old were you when 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 we did that? Oh God. <laughs> Are you gonna bring this up? Uh, yeah, gonna I'm gonna bring up Brothers of the Night. Oh, this is the debut. Oh God. This is the that debit. The, yeah, because that was the first time we, we met, I think. Yeah. Doing that. Oh yeah. Um Debbie Allen was doing the show at the Kennedy Center. Yes. And I had the roll of Teeny Tiny Tap yeah. Theo. <laughs> he was so like cute. two years old or something like yeah. that. I don't know how old I was. You but were really young, though. I think I you were like, were you eight? Eight or nine. Eight, eight or nine. nine or so like then that. I must have been like, what? Ten. Eight or nine. No. I know, right? Eight or nine. Eight or nine. <laughs> Excuse me. Um. Oh, but yeah, no, you were only, yeah, a couple years yeah. older than me. And but then. so you've gone from there. And then what? We then we were at Cal Arts together we for, went to a Cal year. Arts for we went to Cal Arts together a for a year, year and then right. you went to Juilliard. And then I excuse me. I went to the, <laughs> the Juilliard School <laughs> of Actor. No, but But um, then you came straight out the gate and then the next time I saw you was when you were Tybalt in Romeo and Juliet and we on Broadway. Cousins, yes. And that was that was cool. We, we played ourselves. Our, <laughs> we played, we played ourselves, cousins, right? Literally. Um, and then next thing I knew, I looked up and it was straight out of Compton and I said, "Oh, okay, Corey." <laughs> So really, you are the one who has gone all across the board. Thank you. And I actually never told you this. Straight out of Compton, mm -hmm. Corey, you. Oh, we never really talked. No, about we've it, never actually we? talked about it. You killed that. Thank I mean, you. I knew you. I knew wow. it was going to be great. I knew it was going to be great. But when I saw it, I actually was like, I didn't even really know. Right. I knew, but I didn't know. But you know, before and that was the that was the mm, <laughs> I was in the audience like that's my friend. That right ain't there. teeny tiny type that's of thing. My no friend. More. <laughs> you know what's crazy is that like, you know, I mean, before, prior to that, nobody would have nobody would have been like you, you wouldn't have been like you. You look just like Dr. Dr. <laughs> yeah, I right. mean, like nobody <laughs> was thinking that, and I wasn't thinking that, so I was nervous about. That too, but it opened up so many doors. Yes, you know, to to be able to to do, you know, because coming after that and doing or coming after, yeah, Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, you know, I was like, they gonna let me. They yep. know, I just did some Shakespeare. Yes. They gonna let me go and do that too, honey. They gonna let me. You better be, just go all across the all, board. You know, do do me. So that was <laughs> that was cool. It was really really cool. And then to be able to come back and how long did it take to film that? Oh my god, it took about a month and a half to shoot. Okay, maybe two months. But then we prepped for like three months to shoot that. Oh right, of course. Which was wow. Was that and awesome? I the prep on that show. Yes, the prep was that, awesome. I'm sure the prep must have know, been so good. I worked on that show with Paul Giamatti, who you are in billions with, <laughs> who is my dude. <laughs> right, because isn't he the best? He, could, he I mean, he's he's literally not only is one of the greatest actors, but he's just one of the coolest dudes. Chillest dude. I mean, you can just kick back and just, you know. He's so. He's just such a, I don't even know the words to describe. First of all, he's hysterical, mm. which a lot of people mm. don't know, right? Exactly. Like a lot of people don't realize that Paul Giamatti is Every one of the funniest people you may ever meet. Like literally, we'll, turn and, and just, I mean, you know. and we on on set, we're billions. Like yeah. we'll literally be right about to, be right before action, he'll say something, and we're all like, "Good go, okay." okay. <laughs> and then and then he sleep, he goes right back into it, and we're over we're here struggling, there. <laughs> trying, to, <laughs> trying to keep a straight face. <laughs> He's a genius. Yeah. Oh my God, that was crazy to see him in that movie too, because he did right. not look anything like Chuck Rose, and I was like, oh my God, because he transforms. Exactly, and everything he did, and I remember him talking about while we were working on that movie, he was like, I'm really thinking about taking on this this new, you know, going and doing this TV show. And I was like, what, what TV show is it going to be? So glad and he did. And it ended up being that, and I was, I was just like, because he is a completely different, mm -hmm. you know. Now, 24, where do, where, do you, where do you film that? 
Where did you come from? Oh, Hot Atlanta, ATL. Ah. You know, we go down there and shoot a little, um, a little something, something down there. I mean, it was, it was. We shot it for like five months, and Atlanta was so good to us, and the people were so good to us down there, and I just, I mean, I just remember being so, because that show just moves, moves, moves so much, yeah. and and it's literally every hour of every day mm -hmm. is a different episode. And so you're on, you have to be on all the time. Mm -hmm. And so coming from that, I was so wound up that I was like, I have to, I have to switch and get back to New York and get back to my oh, roots and get yay. back to, you know what I'm saying? And yes. get back to theater, you know, yes. after this, because I was so like, you yeah. know. Um, it's because it's our home too. It calls to you, doesn't it? It really does. For me, I was feeling the same way where I, after Romeo and Juliet, I was like, okay, bye. And then I left <laughs> for a little bit. And, um, but it's, it's, it's never going to let you go. It never lets you go. No, and I don't want it to. I, exactly. I've been waiting for the, I was just waiting for the right opportunity to come back and uh, make it work. So I, yeah. Oh, this it was calls, it. It calls, it calls back to you, doesn't it? it? It's so good to be back here. I know. <laughs> I love the city. And I'm like, you know, wherever it takes me. But, but that's the thing as an artist, like, I feel like it feeds you. You know, yeah. we, didn't, we didn't see you a lot on these streets. Right. And, and. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but it's, <laughs> it, it feeds us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, when's the next time that we're going to do a show together? And is it going to be a play or is it going to be a musical? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, for those who don't know, most of you do know, but she has an amazing voice. Oh, please. And, um, Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would, I would love to. I mean, we have that to. That would be kind of cool, together. wouldn't it? We were just about to work together on something. And I then know, it just, because of schedules or something. But. That would be dope. You know? ready to do a musical? I'm ready to do a musical. I'm ready to you do You want to do one. a musical? I'm, I'm, listen, I'm ready to do it. Like, I would I would be A1 down, game time, let's go. If we could do a musical together, that would, that would be, be lit. lit. That would be really, really Food cool. for thought. I know. You're going to put that for out there. For anybody who's watching this. Because, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm eager to get back to it. I just haven't used that I know. part of my voice. I mean, neither. I was singing yeah. with my band, but I haven't. Yeah. I haven't actually. It's a different. It's, it's a, a different, different monster mind. doing the musical for yeah. sure. I was watching Dear Evan Hansen the other day. Uh, and How was, was that? It was. Amazing. I feel bad. I haven't been able to see. I haven't been able to it's see hard. it. It's hard to <sighs> see each other's stuff. Like no, that's the, that's thing. the only when, frustrating when thing about where we're at right now. It's very hard to see each other's work. It's, it's really challenging, but the fun part is we can kick it out. You know, outside of that, but um, but it's hard to celebrate each other's work. You know, if you if you can't see it and, and support it, but um, Dear Evan Hansen was unreal, and yeah. to see a dude, you know, that entire cast, but but Ben just sort of transforms and like he just draws you in, and you admire his discipline, and you admire the the skill that it takes to be able to do that eight times a week. Yeah, I mean, we know what it's like to be able to do that eight yeah. times a week, but. I mean, it's it is a bit. Of, it's a different muscle, different literally, muscle, yeah. <laughs> a different muscle. Yeah, and um, it's amazing. You know? I was like, <laughs> hats off to that because our show is one, no intermission. How long so is your show? We have a, it's it's ninety minutes. Yes, yeah, ninety minutes. In and minutes. out. <laughs> Get to that bar. Come on, ninety minutes. Um, <laughs> 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 no, but it's cool because it's like you get to get on and play. It's like a roller coaster. It just goes. Yeah. It just doesn't. It yeah. doesn't stop. Both of our plays, I think. Yeah, I'm it's that same thing where, like, yes, exactly. Yeah. It's the same thing where, like, the minute you fall off the train, if you fall off the train, it's very hard to get back on the train. Yes. Have you noticed that? I don't know how that is with you. In, in, in Doll's House Part 2, that's yes. the one thing that we deal with a lot, which is, like, listen, we're all yes. human beings, and there are nights where there have been nights in my, you know, life where yeah. I've gone up on a line and been like, okay. Mm -hmm. But if you know the play well enough, you can kind of go like, okay, okay, I know what it is though. And so I'm going to bring it right back around and now we're back. It happened to me this, last night. But this play though? Yeah. If you're off, you're, it's like. Yeah. Oh, you completely. Yeah, because oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. one of those things where yeah. like, I know what's happening, but the language is just so very important that yes. like. That if you miss. If it's, uh, yeah. It's one of those things where like. <laughs> yeah. These pl every single word is so important. Yeah. John Gray wrote this play. He wrote Six Degrees in 1990, mm -hmm. and it's eerie how still how relevant it still is mm -hmm. um, today. Mm -hmm. I have the, uh, this line at the end of the play where I have to remind Weeza, Allison Janney's character, that I'm I'm a black man, and mm -hmm. he wrote this, you know, or I could be killed, yeah, you know, if you take me to the police yeah. without telling them that. And he wrote this play before Rodney King, and you know, yeah. But it's it's one of those things where every single every word, it doesn't matter what it is. 
it is important as the I mean and if you drop it you are it happened I swear last <laughs> night <laughs> the show. and we're in the phone call scene at the end of the show and that's when everything is just sort of spiraling, spiraling. to a head and and I I was just in a moment where I got out of my head I, I got in my head and I wasn't in the in the character and I literally was watching John and Allison I was like <laughs> wow I'm on <laughs> like it was one of those quick brief seconds yeah and I went up and I was like <laughs> 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 and, you, and you're like oh, uh, they're uh, terrifying uh, moments you because know you, it's like it's it's just you just out there yeah. you just out there you just out there and you and you have to find it but it, that's the thing that happens and that's what like I wonder if it happens to other people too because yes. I have those it's moments. The outer body experience where you're like yeah. I'm on a stage wait no I'm not. I'm not on the stage. I'm not on the stage. I'm in this. I'm in this moment. <laughs> but there are moments where all of a sudden it does kind of creep in and there's like a weird like, yes. yeah, awareness of, that's of, the biggest thing. Of yeah. the weirdness of, that, the weirdness of what of we it. do. Yes, exactly. I, you know, you have moments and you're like, I'm wearing a costume What's and happening I'm on the right and I'm doing this thing and, and, you, and you're like, oh, this is a play. Totally. And are, you know? Totally. The worst is when you try to, what catches me in A Doll's House Part 2 um, mm -hmm. is if, it, Again, if you just kind of keep going, keep moving through it, that's really the best thing you can do. Right. Where I feel like it really get—I don't know about you—where it really gets me is if I, if there's like often I won't even drop a line. It'll be that I just put that word over here, yes. where really that word's really over here. It belongs there, and, and it makes not. the same sense. Uh -huh. But because it's over here tonight, I heard it. Like I'll hear myself and be like, that doesn't sound like what it normally sounds like. And the best thing to do is to keep going, but sometimes I'll be trying to figure out <laughs> how to make what, what went, went wrong. wrong. <laughs> but the train but is then, still moving. Right, and then if you do that, then you go mess up over here. Exactly. And that's like, wait, okay, hold on. I, mean, just, I can't even think yes. about this. Or you find something new, or yeah. you go, and, and, and when you pat yourself on the back for finding something new, yeah. and the like, train oh, is still going. Wait, wait, gotta keep going. <laughs> no, no, totally, totally. It totally. Just don't work, totally. You know? The thing about Doll's House Part Two mm -hmm. is that the language of the play in particular, but the character that I'm playing with Emmy, the mm -hmm. choice that we made was that there is a certain way that she speaks where everything kind of does kind of roll off the tongue like that and it yes. goes very, very quickly, but you have to understand what it is that I'm saying. Right. So th it's kind of like a hyper version of myself. Because <laughs> I think that's where the decision came from because I just naturally speak kind of fast. So they were like, well, let's just go with it and amp it up a bit. But, um, <laughs> but um, I had this thing where my brain just truly was not awake enough for that one performance. It was, it was not like, I was literally, I was thinking what I needed to be thinking, but mm -hmm. like something, cir the circuits were not going, they, they were not working. And like, it was like, I would think it, but then my mouth wasn't able to keep up with the thought. And there was one line that I said, I swear to you, Corey, it was not English. <laughs> it was not English. It was not English. No. I wish I could remember what the line was. Oh, it was like I say a line where I say, "Don't make my wants about your wants." Right. I swear to you, I was like, "But don't make it sad." It was about it. Like it was like not English. I but was like, know "That was gibberish." When the thought is there, <laughs> yeah. You just you just keep going. You just keep. And going. I feel like Lori kind of looked at me like. <laughs> I had okay. A I, had, okay, I, I know what you meant, but I had a moment like this in the beginning of Six Degrees. Um, my character walks into he's a con man, you know. He walks into mm -hmm. these, the lives of these Upper East Side, perfect Upper East Side white home mm -hmm. with a stab wound, and and you know, a few minutes into the play, he sort of has them in the palm of his hand because mm -hmm. he has this sort of charm about him and this this thing that. I like to think charm, you know, I bring it from um no <laughs> but like you know, like he has this thing about him that that uh that that sort of I guess draws people in and, and he has this moment where he does this this speech from um about Catcher in the Rye that he claims that he wrote, this thesis mm -hmm. on it. Um and do you have those moments where I was doing this maybe about a week ago and the words were actually all there? But I mean, it just—I was complete, and, and I didn't drop a didn't drop a word, didn't drop anything. But but your body sort of goes on autopilot because you know that's the pace the play is supposed to go at. But mm. then you know, I, it was one of those moments, and I looked over same way I looked at Lori, and I was just like, I looked over at Allison, and she was just like, "Did <laughs> you still have about ten more minutes of this monologue to go?" So Are we like, here? Can't help, can't help you here, you know. But um, but it is true that you can always. For the most part, put it out there, and, and your castmates. And find so, it, yeah. yeah. Your castmates will be there to, 
to catch you. I think that that's also a beautiful thing about theater. Yeah. I think in theater, especially because it's live, because yeah. because you don't have that director saying cut if you mess it up. Right. It it kind of puts the actors in a place where you are welcomed, if not forced, to be there for each other, no matter to. what, because it's it's we're all on the same boat. Whereas I right. I felt in not so much in billions, but just just sometimes I've been on certain sets. Yeah. I won't say which one. <laughs> but I've been on certain sets yeah, where it's camera. kind of, <laughs> where it is where it is a little bit every man for himself. Mm -hmm. And that always, I think because I come from the theater, it's just Works not the, the way that I operate. Even, for example, even the way that we are in Billions, because Paul comes from theater, yeah. Toby does yep. theater as well. So like the way that we operate, we kind of run, right, yeah. we, run that, we run that set, we run our portion of that show kind of like how it is with theater where we're, we're constantly we rehearse with each other. We you know you what I mean? Set the tone. For yeah, that. and we we, yeah. we figure it out together. Yeah. Whereas like I have been on certain sets where it's like, you know, if it's not that person's coverage, like right. you ain't getting nothing. <laughs> if I'm there. Yeah, if I'm there. If right. I don't have a stand in standing there. Exactly. Which you know I I get it, but like it's just not know. my vibe. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't I, really deal. I don't I don't dig that so and much. And I think that's the that's the great thing about theater artists and and the good thing about you know, people like you because you you know what I mean. You are given and you have that kind of. But poor, and, and, and that's the thing that I think the film industry in Hollywood can sometimes learn from theater. You yes, know? catch up, children. Yeah, that's why people catch up. <laughs> it's just like, oh <laughs> boy, you know? Because uh, it's a magical place. It's it is. Yeah. Now, what is what is your odd like for in, in terms of your audience? Like, what what is the demographic? Like, what who's like? Mm. Do you got young people coming? You got what, what's the deal? I mean, strangely, it's interesting because I mean, it, it we do have a lot of younger, um, a lot of younger kids who come. You know, maybe not to the matinees, but mm -hmm. you know, okay. people gotta work. You know, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely, um, <laughs> you know those matinee shows. Everybody in the theater knows those matinee shows. But <laughs> it's interesting that that that. Now and there's a lot of people who've seen the play, saw the original oh, in 1990, okay. who are coming back and seeing this and seeing it with fresh eyes and asking John if these change anything. But it really is interesting how many young people are coming and staying. And after the show, we'll talk to them. Isn't and, that amazing? And, and they and they literally, and you don't think that a play like this can hold that kind of an. I mean, you you would hope that it can. You know, this generation that's on the phones and the interweb and in, internet. <laughs> Ooh, not the interweb. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the um, you know, social media and all that. On that, that internet. And the, and that internet. Um, <laughs> the World Wide Web. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> but, um, you know, you, you, this, that's the generation that we live in. And so you don't expect that people could co would, would want to come and would, would sit there. But people are enraptured by, yeah. the, by this man, by the words that he wrote. I mean, these characters just literally lift off the page and we break the fourth wall in, mm. in the show too. So okay. we're talking to the audience and, and they're recounting this encounter with Paul, this guy who pretends to be the son of Sidney Poitier. Okay. Who comes into their lives. And so it's interesting because it's a different generation. The play was written about that time and it's set in the 80s, but it still has so much relevance again today. That's to, so good know. to hear. Yeah. I, I feel I'm really happy to hear that because yeah. we have a lot of young people coming to see Adults House Part Two, and yeah. that surprised me. Really, I won't say surprised, but I just was very happy to see that too. Mm -hmm. Young people are, are coming out. Are still. I think it's important, and yeah. I think that sometimes some people can be a little bit, you know, yeah, weird about that. But I feel like, well, y'all, the young people are, are going to be the ones to carry theater going. Keep so this we tradition. actually need them. Exactly. To, we have to like. We have to we have to welcome them. We have to we have to invite them in. We have to hope that they will. Right. They we especially now in this time like we it's it, it means even more because that means that they took that hour and a half or however long off their phones. Exactly. To sit, and that's a real. To th sit in the I dark. I hate to say that that's a real thing right now, but yeah. that is the reality of our yeah. situation. And I think how important and lovely is that that we can that we can continue having that happen. It's so necessary. That is so necessary. I'm glad you I'm glad you said that because like that's. That's all, you know, we live in a really fraught time. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. It's wild. <laughs> wild. <laughs> I mean, it's bananas, but but that is the power of theater. And, yeah. it, and it is encourage, it's encouraging to see that that's happening on your show, too, because, I mean, it's it's needed. Yeah. So, uh, so, so Corey, uh, nominated for your first Tony. Well, listen, I'm just trying to catch up with you. Nominated oh, now for, look. You know, your third Tony <laughs> now. Come on now. Come on now. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. We're here. I am so, I mean, <laughs> I'm just so happy to see your success and to see you win. I'm so proud of you oh, for this. I mean, I, I literally woke up the next morning. I was so oblivious 
to it. I wasn't thinking about it. And I woke up at like 11.30 that morning. <laughs> like, huh? Everybody was like calling me. <laughs> they were like, so you know you I was like, what? Oh, Corey, when <laughs> I know? saw your name, I was like, yes. <laughs> but it was so cool that we get to go through this together. I know. You know? I know. We get to do this together and we get to, because it's a, it's a challenging thing to navigate. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if it's if it's pressures that you put on yourself or or even you know, and we, it's, it's, I, for me, I'm finding it's important not to think about that. But it to is, continue. isn't it? You have to just yeah. keep doing what it is that you're doing, yeah. right? Yeah. Continue I feel the same get way. Doing what got you to this point. Totally. And finding new things and doing, you know, and everything else will kind of work itself out. Totally. You know? But to be honored in this way is surreal. At the same time, this, our journey has been, I has mean, has been like this. Literally. <laughs> it's, it's the most it's amazing wild. way. It's so wild from, from kids. And I know. You're trying to be in Brothers of the Night. <laughs> trying to be one of the brothers. <laughs> yeah, it's going to oh, be yeah. fun. It's fun. All night. I can say, as as because I have been before, is that it's fun. At the end of the day, we do what we do because it's what we do, and we love we to love do what we do. Yeah. And so that's where, you know, and there, there are other, I feel like there are other people in, in other places that, you know, we do, we what, we do what we do. As we have done. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday. Sunday, Sunday.